I will it. say I think that quarantine looks good on us. Yeah. Because we do like it's been very like we have a routine that uh-huh. has been like very consistent and also it's like every single day for the past five months we've sat down and eaten dinner together every Aww. single day every That's single nice. day like there's never been a time where it's like we skipped it we forgot we were running like it wasn't a big deal or he ate in, over there and i ate like that has never happened like five months straight every single day like we sit down we watch our shows we eat dinner and it's like there's no world in which that would have ever happened had right. we not been in the conditions that we're in now i think like any key to a good relationship is obviously communication and i think like obviously no one would have asked for this pandemic but like you you have to try and make the best of it like you know you take your the hand that you're dealt and i think given our circumstances like the, the enhanced communication that we experienced because we were the only people that we could communicate with <laughs> you know but it's also like it almost couldn't have happened at a better time. Like you would kind of love that welcome, like such open talk, such transparency in the beginning of your marriage, because like now we're going to like build and grow upon this. You're listening to real love, real stories podcast, a podcast to share love stories, to learn about love and to thrive in love. So no matter where you are on the spectrum of love, this is the place to be. My name is Kanu and I'm the host coming to you with another love story. And this time it's being shared by someone near and dear to my heart, my cousin Andrea and her husband, Kevin. Their marriage was featured in the New York Times. So look for the link in the show notes to read more about their wedding. Enjoy their love story. Are you frustrated about not finding love? Have you been told that you are intimidating and unapproachable? The Single Black Woman's Advantage is a game-changing program that is helping many women change their narrative on how they are perceived into an advantage to become a love attractor. If you are ready to attract love, then click the link in the show notes to learn more and start your journey today. Welcome to Real Love, Real Stories. This is the place to share stories, to learn about love, and to thrive in love. (laughs) So why don't we start by you guys introducing yourselves to the audience. I was literally, uh, I'm Andrea. This is my husband, Kevin. We've been married for about seven months. So (laughs) very long time, very experienced. (laughs) Uh, no, but we've been dating since 2014. Um, we got engaged in 2018, and then we got married on New Year's Eve of this year of 2019 into 2020. Nice. Very lucky, very blessed. Oh, nice, nice. I'm so excited to have you guys here. Thank so, you for having us. Yeah, why don't you take us back? Take us back to when this love story began. Okay, sure, I'll take the lead here. Uh, so where it began? Well, I guess um, I guess we started out as, like, friends first. I guess I always felt, like, uh, a sort of inclination towards Dre. I call her, I call her Dre. Uh, uh-huh. I, like to, I like to give all my friends, like, little nicknames, and it's funny. He gives everybody he's ever met a nickname. You can say your name one time, and then after that, he'll never say your name again. You have a nickname. But it was like it was, it was like an effortless <laughs> friendship, but I also felt like it was there was something more there. I knew that, like, my favorite parts of her were really appealing to me. And I was, even though I was only like 25, I still felt like, you know, at that age, you kind of want something more. Like you're just tired of the games and tired of being single. So I just felt like it was something that I wanted to try and pursue like romantically. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it worked out at first. I think I was maybe closer to her <laughs> than I thought she, than I really was. <laughs> you know, we like recap You also have backwards. to keep in mind that we were colleagues. So we had st- I had started a new job working at the same place that he was working. So we met in a professional setting. Right. Uh, but it was part of a program with a lot of young people. And so a lot of the people who you work with, you we all basically moved to this town to work together. So then you go to hang out with those people outside of work and everyone has really crazy schedules. So we all kind of like stuck to each other. Uh-huh. And so we had met in a way that was like, I was thinking more, professionally because I had just started the job so I wasn't really like walking in there being like who's gonna be my boyfriend or husband or anything (laughs) like that uh whereas he had been there a while and he sees a pretty girl and (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> that's what he's thinking about. Nice, nice. So yeah, I want to know, Kevin, so that moment when you first met her, uh-huh. it, like, describe that to me. Uh, well, I mean, I just, we just, we talked first at work, you know, it was a very casual, brief conversation, you know, just, she just seemed nice. And then mm-hmm. I think like maybe like the next day or two, like the night after like, we went out and we talked and we had a chat. I mean, it definitely like, I'm not going to lie and say it was like some crazy movie, like dream sequence, like the halo. Yeah. Hey, like it wasn't, you know, it's not super, it wasn't anything like that. It was just, you never know. You're just living life. Like you, you can never choose those moments. I, I, I can't handpick certain moments and be like, this is the day I find my wife. Like, I wish it was that easy, right? Because yeah. then, then I would have scheduled this date a lot sooner and saved us <laughs> time. You know, it's just like when our paths came across, and I just think, like, you know, we just we started growing, or my, my, my love for her started growing. So I think that's, that's the biggest thing is, like, well, love is a continuous thing. Even when you first find it, like, you know, all the, all the people in the best marriages who, you know, have been married longer than us would tell you that love is something that is, like, maintained and it's always growing. And it's mm-hmm. ever changing. So to say that I find I find love is like I first found love and then it like continued to blossom. Like oh, it wasn't right. even like even And it's also a completely different thing than it was back then too. It's like you think about how much when I was I'm almost thirty now and we met when I was probably like twenty three. Uh-huh. And even like when I started like having really strong feelings for him and even when we started getting really serious with one another back then. I think about what that was and what we are now and it's still like completely different worlds and how much like we've grown and how much we've changed and how much like our priorities have shifted the conversations that we have are I don't want to say like they're more substantial than they were then but they're about completely different things and like our values are in different places and we talk about things that back then even though we were in love like we wouldn't have touched and it's just i don't know it's really like no but see see that's why i love her because like she articulated like my same sentiments like that really is like what it is like it's so hard for me to answer a question now in hindsight Mm. you know what i'm saying like i'm so blessed to have experienced so much and have learned so much so whatever i was even expecting in that moment paled in comparison to what it really is right like when you first like you, you first see something like oh like this would be like a nice like new thing to have but you don't even know right it takes like a minute to learn and forever to master so right, it's like right. it was just so much better than i could have anticipated it so i know that was a very long roundabout way to answer <laughs> i'm not even sure if i answered it <laughs> i'll also warn you that i'm a very good spin doctor all right <laughs> you answered it in the best kevin way that you could answer it i love it and i love that <laughs> Awesome. So, okay. So you met at work and then you're hanging out and getting to know each other. And um, I'll just drop that in here that I, you know, according to the New York article that was written for you guys, uh, somewhere in there it mentioned about a date uh, at a restaurant. <laughs> so how did that come to be? I'll let you tell me. Is well, it another no, one of those two actually, sides? Right? It's Every actually story. funny because I think that he had, he had been using our friendship to try to, like, get a date <laughs> on the books a couple of times. And the first time I remember, he was like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, nothing. And he was like, oh, do you want to, like, grab some food? Maybe go on a walk? Maybe ball? And he named, like, three things. And I was like, that's definitely a date. This guy's trying to take me on date. And it was, like, very obvious. So that one, I was like, I don't know about that. Like, I wasn't sure yet. So then the second one, the one that's in the article, was when he basically was like, well, let's go grab some food, and I'm not going to turn that down. And so we, like, <laughs> went to eat, went to a Chili's, which is also hilarious. Cause I will say Chili's is very good. But <laughs> if you're talking in the, in the context of a grand love story, I don't think you want to be like, we had a beautiful night at Chili's. I had a Bud Light <laughs> and Southwest uh, egg rolls. Like, that's not really, like, the love story you want to tell, especially not the New York Times. So when he asked that, I was like, oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> but I remember, like, sitting there and being like, okay, like, you're just, like, having dinner. You order a drink, and then you start feeling like, okay, this is – a date i think like it's there was a million i lured her in with chili (laughs) sorry that was the facade that was like oh it's safe it's chili Eh, no pressure and then it was like and then it was when he paid and i was like oh okay because it wasn't even like you know the struggle where it's like oh uh no i'll get uh, 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 that thing like didn't happen like it was very much like i got this i'm paying like nice this was a meal we had and i was like oh okay i'm on a date for (laughs) sure because i didn't even have the opportunity to pretend like i was looking for my wallet (laughs) 
<laughs> who's gonna take it I, I like a guy who takes charge like that like there's no yeah. question at it's all it's also you know? nice too because I think the one thing and I, I might be jumping ahead a few questions but I think it pertains to this too is like one thing that was different about us that I think in past relationships both of us have dealt with is that whole like I don't know what we are. I like him. I don't know if he likes me. Like, I don't know if he's going to text me back. I'm sitting by sitting around waiting for the, a call. Like we never did that. Like we never really had to do the whole like drama in the beginning and jealousy in the beginning. Like those, like, am I getting played? Am I not getting played? Like the one thing I can say about Kevin is he was always consistent and he was always very forward with what he wanted. I and love even it. me being young and not being used to that. I remember even saying like, there's, you're, are you serious? Like, you really like me. Like, you're going to take me home to your parents. Like, are you serious? Like, there was a point where I literally was like, are you Verbatim, serious? Verbatim, like those words. Yeah. <laughs> and wow. he was like, yes, yes. Like, or like very early on. So I feel like a lot of the games we didn't have to play, which is actually very, like, refreshing. I encourage it. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah. And I think it should, I think it also comes from someone, like, knowing what they want and being very confident in that and being very straightforward. He, like, he gave me that and it, made a world of difference i think for sure oh my i love it i love it so okay chili's date happens and then <laughs> chili's date's gonna follow me my whole life <laughs> i mean you know it, i mean it's not a bad restaurant i don't think it's not a bad restaurant it's just like i don't know i think i mean maybe it's because we started i think we started as like because we started as friends, it was just, like, so casual. So I felt like even though I wanted something more, I feel like there's no really blueprint to go that route, right? right. Like, how many, like, very fruit, there are very few relationships to be like, oh, I was in the friend zone, and then we got married, right? Like, that's not your – I feel like it's not your typical story. But then again, maybe I need to listen to more of your podcast. I'm not going to be wrong. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, for the listeners out there, like, Chili's is not, is not, is not a dead killer, right? It's not, it's not a, <laughs> you no, never Chili's know, is so. Good. Chili's is good. Yeah. If you go conversations of Southwestern egg rolls, you know, then you'd be all right. So. Yeah. But I love what you said, though, in terms of like, there were, you know, there was no question there. There are no games. And, and there's just a lot of that that happens in a lot of couples when they're trying to get to know each other and, mm -hmm. you know, playing games and stuff. It's like, what's the point? Like, yeah. you like somebody, you like somebody. Talk to me about the engagement. How was that? Uh, I so, didn't do anything. I just showed up and got a ring. So, <laughs> so <you know>. yeah. <laughs> um, so, it's, I mean, obviously, the, the both of us were, like, really big on family. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's, like, really important in our lives. It's, like, you know, because we have such, like, morals and values that align with one another, it's, like, part of the huge, huge reason why we love each other. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know that she said she always wanted to get married like, in, or propose to in front of her family. So I internalized that. I always knew that had to be a part of my plan. And it just so happened that around the time like I purchased the ring, it was like later in the winter. So mm -hmm. we got an, uh, an invite to go and spend Christmas with her sister in Texas. So of course, like where all our family is. So I, I told her sisters like ahead of time, like I'm gonna propose. Like I need your help. Like let's you know let's surprise her. It'd be something really sweet, unexpected. So on Christmas Eve, uh, we were spending the night at uh, her sister's house. And, you know, we were getting really dressed up. Everybody's in on the surprise, even her nephews so who were like nine and five, which <laughs> at the time I did not know, which would have been worrisome because they're nine and five. That but to their credit, mind. to their credit, they were When sealed, I found out sealed. my wow. nephews knew I was getting proposed to and they didn't say anything all day long, that blew my mind. That's I think that was the first time where I was like, oh my gosh, they're not babies anymore. Like, so, they're capable of keeping a secret. It was That's funny impressive. that day. It was funny that day, too, because, like, Dre didn't want to get dressed up. Cause she's like, let's just our family. You know, it's Christmas Eve. It's one of our sweats. But, like, it's all going to be on camera. So, like, her sister had to get her going and get all dolled up and stuff. <laughs> well, she was, like, she was kind of like, we should do, like, a cocktail party and we'll drink champagne and everybody will, like, get dressed up and all that stuff. And it sounded great in theory, but I was the last person to get there because we flew in from New York. I missed a book. Like, I had a nightmare of getting there he was already in texas and i was still in new york just like trying to get a flight so i didn't have anything to wear i didn't have my nails done i didn't like all these things that i was just like i just i'm so happy i'm here i don't care about this and she's like no we need to go find you something to wear so like day of we were like going to the mall and like trying on all this stuff and me just thinking like this is super unnecessary not like this is what you're getting engaged in but <laughs> so so part of the ruse was even though it was christmas eve um me and Dre, we always, whenever we go out, 
we always stop in a photo booth, like if any bar ever has them. So we have like a bunch of little Polaroids all stacked up. It's like a little like cute years so Yeah, like you know, that's just like our thing. So uh, for Christmas, we're like, let's set up our own little photo booth station. We had like a whole little like uh, like a drop, you know, wallpaper. We had little props. We had like, little Polaroid cameras. So we were like pretending to pose pose for our Christmas photo, and that's when I took the ring out and I got down and I proposed to her. Uh, it's funny because I feel like moments before, I think she knew something something was in the works because like her best friend randomly showed up out of nowhere, and she's like, "Why are you here?" Unless I was happy to here. see her, but she's also like not the kind of person who comes over without being invited. Like she doesn't just like drop in on people. Right. And so I was like, "Hey, like what's going on?" And it, luckily, it was like pretty much minutes after that that we got engaged. Otherwise, I would have been like, "What are you doing here?" <laughs> But I was happy that she was there. I was happy that, you know, my no, friends were there. Like there. Oh, that, that sounds beautiful. So your family is there and your best friend showed up. and mm-hmm. It was really nice. Oh, nice. So w- when was the engagement? What, what year? Christmas Eve of 2018. Oh, okay. Okay. And then the wedding was uh, uh, December 31st, 2019. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm a December, like enthusiast like I always knew I was gonna get married on either New Year's Eve or some point in December like I just I love it I feel like everything's magical outside glistening lights like the holiday spirit dress up like I just I'm obsessed with that vibe and so I knew I was gonna be a December bread one way or another and I just got really lucky that our venue was available on New Year's Eve yeah and I mean the the photos and everything else is just amazing everything yeah, great. The Jane yeah. Did a great job that's a great venue so my next thing that I always ask my couples you know people living together um getting to I, I don't know if you guys lived together before but I kind of want to know <laughs> what are some annoyances that you have to deal with with each other in how much life? time do you have <laughs> I'm just kidding no, Kevin's actually a great roommate. <laughs> he definitely care. He he is goes above and beyond. I think I always like joke he'd be a really great stay at home dad because he just like loves to vacuum and nobody loves to vacuum. <laughs> um, but what are the bad things that he does? Go, oh, yeah, me. I'm sure you can fix that. Uh, he talks too much. That's one thing that like you can't escape because he's always around. <laughs> Admittedly, yo, count the yo, listeners, jot down the minutes when this is done. All right, like my voice and her voice. Let's we'll just we do real numbers. But He's not gonna talk too much to you. Though. I guess I don't know. He's not good at refilling the water purifier. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so pour a glass of water and leave the pitcher empty on the counter. That and is all like, too much. Is how, how do you expect there to be more water for anybody else, and not only that, for yourself? the next time you get thirsty if you just leave it on the counter <laughs> empty i don't understand the I, would say, I would say my biggest thing for dre would probably be she's she drops a lot of crumbs sometimes oh my god step in. if you need me you can just follow the, the like pile of crumbs and you will find me i i drop food on everything i eat i spill everything i drink it's really bad and a lot of times i'll like eat and look at him and just to see if he saw it like <laughs> now, just to see. I, I would feel like those little things though those little quirks you just have to understand your person you know what i'm saying like right, it's, right. especially like during this pandemic like we got married and then we got quarantined together right so there was like we're gonna be on top of each other there wasn't a way yeah. around it we both work from home now yeah. but like the thing is like you need to remember like that you love your person and like why you love your person and not yeah. focus on like the one or two things that you dislike Right. But, like, sometimes it could be easy to forget that when you're living on top of each other, you yeah. know, and, like, it is, a, you know, it's a crazy time. Like, you just, no one's really lived through this shit before. Yeah. 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 This is, this, these are different, different times for sure. And yeah. a lot of relationships are on trial because of the whole COVID, you know. So <laughs> yeah, it's wild. It's wild. I will too. say, I think that quarantine looks good on us. Yeah. Because we do, like, it's been very, like, we have a routine. That Uh has been, like, very consistent. And also, it's, like, every single day for the past five months, we've sat down and eaten dinner together every single day. Every single day. Like, there's never been a time where it's, like, we skipped it. We forgot. We were running, like, it wasn't a big deal. Or he ate over there, and I ate. Like, that has never happened. Like, five months straight, every single day, like, we sit down, we watch our shows, we eat dinner. And it's, like, there's no world in which 
that would have ever happened had right. we not been in the conditions that we're in now. And it's like, yeah, before we had dinner together, but the, it was hit or miss. Like some days it's like, I'm working late or it's like some days I have to go do this thing or there's just, there's a whole world out there that makes all like distractions run everywhere. Right. And so we've been really good about spending this time together and balancing each other out. I think. That's no, a hundred percent. I think like any key to a good relationship is obviously communication. And I think like, obviously no one would have asked for this pandemic, but like you, you have to try and make the best of it. Like, you know, you take your, the hand that you're dealt. And I think given our circumstances, like the, the enhanced communication that we were experienced because we were the only people that we could communicate with, <laughs> you know, but it's also like, it almost couldn't have happened at a better time. Like you would kind of love that welcome, like such open, talk such transparency in the beginning of your marriage because like now we're going to like build and grow upon this and like we've already like torn down walls just right. just learning how to communicate with one another like it sounds simpler than it is it's not just like using words in english and like you know it's like yeah. you're only understanding each other's like tone like sometimes like the biggest thing i think when me and dre like argue right is i'll be like Dre's like, oh well i didn't say anything like that severe well i'll be like okay well i only listen to like your tone because that's how I speak. Like when I like, you know, so it's like yeah. sometimes it's how we like we perceive things differently. So oh, then when yeah. you're getting into an argument, like, you know, if I say something, then you need to like interpret it from my end. But on the same end, when you say something, then I need to interpret it from, from your end. Like putting each each cells in each other's shoes or you know, or whatever. Yeah. Like yeah. I don't know, just communication, talking it out. Because at the end of the day, like you two love each other. So like you're gonna figure it out, you yeah. know? So yeah, no, that's, that's what, what I think anyway. That's what that's what I stand on. That's what I believe. So you know. No, that's that's great. And and you know, part of the question that I ask is the, sort of the um, advice that you give to other couples, and it sounds like that one is a strong one for you guys. Is communication between the two of you. Um, but if you want to add more to that one, let me come back in a second. But I want to finish the other part. Uh, and here, <laughs> what are um, you know, on the flip side of that, what are some things or, you know, qualities that you love about each other? Um, Kevin is, like, always in a perpetual, he's just a perpetual good mood guy. Oh, and it's good. really hard to just be, like, positive all the time. Um, especially just if you just, like, look outside or get on the internet. <laughs> <All right>. um, <laughs> and so I think it's, like, very affirming to have someone who is just sickly optimistic yeah and it's very helpful and uh he does that really well uh i try it and I yeah know. he's just Aww. like it's impossible to be mad at him too because he's always just like <laughs> like a little Aww. excited puppy all the time <laughs> i know i just feel like blessed like for everything that i've experienced in life everything that i have you know so just like i don't know it could always be worse, right? That's my mindset. So, like, right, why not right. be happy, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, my God, just, you know, there's a reality that I couldn't even dream of that is so bleak. Now, it just sounds super cynical, which I also <laughs> might be. Not one of my most lovable traits, though. But uh, one thing I love about Dre, though, uh -huh. Dre is so strong. Like, to me, like, her resolve, like, her will, her determination, like, all of, all of that is embodied, like, when the word strength, it's like an umbrella, for a bunch of other really nice adjectives. But that's but I just like feel like she's a force, you know, like what she represents, like her whole like being. So yeah. I feel like I love that behind me. And sometimes I feel like selfish saying that because I feel like I benefit from that because I'm inspired by it. But at the same time it's her aura. So just, you know, take that for what it is, but that's like why I love her. So, you know, just like what she represents, what she is. She that's motivates beautiful. me. Beautiful. That's beautiful. It makes my heart happy to hear that. <laughs> Yeah, so that's awesome. So back to, um, I loved how you guys started talking about communication and how it's even more important in this day and age of COVID, right? And the stay home and working together and all that. What other advice would you have or tips for couples to make their relationship work? I always, I think the one thing that, <laughs> I think it just goes with communication too is, it's just like not brewing, like not letting resentment brew. Mm -hmm. And just like when you keep it and you internalize it and you're mad about one thing and then it's five days later and you're still annoyed about one thing. And it's like, he also has no idea 
it's because you never said anything. This happened and, before, and yeah, it's happened and it's like, and when you when those things come out, it's just it doesn't benefit anyone. It's awkward, it's weird, because it's also just like what like what are you even talking about? And I think that like <laughs> one thing I both of us do, even when it's annoying, is if I'm upset about something, I'll be like, hey, I just really didn't like that you said this. I just really didn't like that you did this. And we have those conversations wherever we are. Like, we could literally be waiting for the subway, and it's like, I know I'm mad about something, Mm -hmm. and if I just say, hey, I really didn't like that you did this, and he's like, oh, I didn't even know, or vice versa, and then, like, by the time the subway comes and we get on, we're already over it. Because it's just, it's usually just a very quick acknowledgement of the thing, and then an apology. It's usually not so, because we don't fight about like anything big like if anything it's like I just really didn't like that you didn't you know do the dishes when blah 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 blah, and it just made me feel like I had to do everything that day and it was just a lot for me blah 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 and then it's like now he knows now we've said sorry or I've said sorry or whatever and like we're off and we're over it and I think that just like that simple sentence I really didn't like when you did this it made me feel really bad when you did this or like I kind of felt blah 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 and that I think that's helped us not to have like blow up fights like we're not like the type we don't really like yell at each other they you know? never throw throw anything yeah like when people <laughs> get into the, the, the fights that we see on tv i'm just like why are they so upset or like this like i can understand people being upset but i think a lot of it is because you let things brew and right you don't test them when it's so much easier just to like get it out yeah i totally agree when i worked as a therapist i used to see couples coming to see me and that was one of the things that would happen is that, you know, that resentment, something happens and then you hold it in, you don't say it, and then it builds up, it builds up. And then when you get to the point where you start fighting, it's like <laughs> an explosion. And, well, yeah. and then it's not healthy then, you know? Right. So that, that's awesome that you guys talk about, you know, in the moment or at the earliest, as soon as you can talk about it. Um, yeah. So anything you want to add, Kevin, to that? Uh, I think like, I mean, like just piggybacking on, on all that, it's all like kind of like communication based, but even the, like beneath that, the underlying fact is the respect. Like if you don't respect your mm, partner, that's a it doesn't big even one. matter what you talk about. You that's know what I'm saying? Like her, yep. her, her words will, or his words will fall by the wayside. So like it comes with the respect first. And I think like, if you're going to put a ring on it, then you should already kind of be there. Mm. Like I feel like, right. Like. Not to say that you guys, you know, if you're listening at home, now, now is a better time to start than ever. Okay. I mean, because honestly, like, you need that more so than anything. Like, yeah. With respect comes understanding, comes communication, comes growth. So I, should, I feel like that should be on a t shirt or something. Right. Which is a poster. All right. We'll, we'll launch that, three, the three of us. That's, 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 that's but yeah, no, definitely. 110%. Gotta have the respect for one another. Because yeah. then you're really going to empathize with her and, and like, you're listen to what she has to say. And then, right. and then act on it. And that, that, that's, that's the, but the third third part, right? Respect, right. respect, communication, then acting upon what your partner's asking of you. Because even right. once you hear it, it, it might be hard to do it sometimes. So, yeah. like, sometimes. And, and I think, like, when you have tasks in general, like, some, sometimes look at a big one goal is a lot. So you break it down. She likes to say, like, bird by bird, like, brick by brick, by brick you know. Like, if she wants to be better and improve on something, like, take it, you know, one step at a time, you know, so. Yeah. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. Was there a question that you guys were hoping I would ask you that I didn't ask that you want to talk about? Whenever she says she's not hungry, you just always order extra. I always just order extra food just in case, always. Yeah. <laughs> if I say no, I'm probably You're sharing plates. Yeah, no. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, also, this is, I think, it, like, I've never seen anybody else do this, but Kevin <laughs> will always give me the last bite of his food, which oh, I think is that's insane. So sweet. But, like, also, like, the highest form of love because I'm, like, I don't know if I could give you the last bite of, like, a really delicious piece of pizza, but he'll give me his, and it's very sweet. Oh, my God. That is so sweet. I don't know. For some reason, her happiness makes me happy. <laughs> I think that's just... Oh. It's not, and like, especially when the food is so good, and I'll eat it, and I'm, like, oh, my God, I don't... That is so good. I can't believe you just gave me that. <laughs> that is... That's love right there. I also love doing activities with your partner. Like, I advise yeah. that a lot. Like, it's just, it's fun because, like, you're communicating, like, you're interacting with one another, you're building memories, you look back upon and laugh at and enjoy. Like, I always try to get her in the kitchen with me 
And I think that, like, because of the situation, we've had a lot more time to, like, we've been staying in. Places yeah. have been closed, so we've been talking to one another. But it's yeah. really fun. It's really great. We love to learn and discover new things together. Mm. Like, we learned how to grow green onions. Like, we learned how to cook certain food items, like how to make cilantro. We've had a like, lot of fun learning. Penny like, sauce. Learning yeah. and liking new foods. Oh, that's and, awesome. I mean, obviously, like, we're in New York City, so we had a, a bunch of very scary months uh when the pandemic first started and so Mm -hmm. now we're kind of getting in the mode of going outside and like get taking a nice walk every once in a while which i think has been great for us too because there was weeks where i didn't even go downstairs and check the mail because i was too scared to go outside oh my god Uh, kevin would have to try to beg me to like go up to the roof with him and like just sit but it's like very like it was a scary time and it was was, sirens outside Mm -hmm. and just like it was a scary world and so now another thing I think of that's helped us like bond and get out and relax has been like going on nice walks and going on nice picnics and just things that, you know, we can still do six feet apart from people, <laughs> but not in our apartment. So that's right. been nice. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So I like to do this couples challenge, TikTok style. Okay. Oh, so, okay. So who initiated the first kiss? Kevin. Me. <laughs> <laughs> and then who said I love you first? Kevin. Me. <laughs> it'll be easy. It'll be easy. <laughs> Who's more romantic? Me? Actually, I don't know. I don't know. Actually, I like the thing I, I am, but she's probably me. she's probably more. Yeah. I'm a, I'm just a better planner. Like I plan stuff for us to do way more than he does. I just feel shit. I'm more emotional. He's That's more a different emotional. word. Yeah. I'm more emotional. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. I, I wouldn't have chosen a first date. That's fair. <laughs> okay. Okay. So who apologizes first after they fight? He always apologizes, <laughs> even when he's not wrong. And I'm like, oh, he's going to do that. <laughs> I like, so h- how I grew up in my household, like my mom always taught me, uh, never go to sleep angry. Right. And I feel like I internalized that. Cause that's the whole thing we talked about with resentment before. When you let shit build and fester, you start inventing like new scenarios in your head. Right. Like, oh, why did you do this? It's yeah. because of that. You start pulling these strings together that have nothing to do with one another. Like, you should just fucking act. It's so much simpler. Yeah. Right, right. That's yeah. my two cents. There was some, like, early in our relationship, we used to call it Battle of the Brats. <laughs> because we would both be mad at each other and then just see how long we could, like, not talk. <laughs> And it would be like, I don't know, is he going to say sorry? Am I going to say sorry? I'm not going to say sorry. I'm going to make him say sorry. And he's like, I'm not going to say sorry. I'm going to make her say sorry. Um, those days are behind us now, obviously. <laughs> Battle of the rats. I love it. I love it. So who's the funny one? Dre is funny. I think I'm also funny. Uh-huh. He's I'm funny, funny, but I'm definitely funnier. I, yeah, sure. I don't really sure. think it's like a... <laughs> Close. I feel like she has higher peaks, but I have a broader audience. Oh. So that. that comes back to him talking more. He, gets, <laughs> he has a lot more options to get laughs because he just always has the floor. I think my self laughs. Does that count? Actually, that counts. <laughs> oh, see, there you go. <laughs> She's a pro. I'm going through her opinion, so. Uh, who's the most patient? Kevin. I think I am, yeah. And who's the better cook? me Ugh. it's pretty close I, by hair by hair the by difference hair. is like i'm like if in the world of cooking this is all fake but i would be a more like professionally trained chef and kevin is more like the guy who opened a food truck that everybody loves you know oh. what i mean so it's like i could have a restaurant but his food truck is still like banging but it's like he put an entire stick of butter in here that he didn't measure <laughs> <laughs> so you know, all the all the great chefs say they cook on feel all right yeah like Bobby, i'm like i set a timer like Gordon I Rams did not roll around the meat and and wave, and yeah. I, like but it's still like it, there's here. like a line out the door out, out the street for his food truck that's funny well, this was a lot of fun. Yeah, this is great. I'm so excited that you guys mm-hmm. took time to chat with me and sharing of your course. story with the audience. And, you of know, course. it's a beautiful love story. Of course, I'm Thank biased, you. but it's beautiful. <laughs> so, yeah. Anything else you guys want to add? No, I mean, thank you again for having us. Love to talk and share. And, you know, hopefully if anyone's listening, you know, whatever you can take from this, if it's one thing, you know, I'm glad and hopefully it helps. Yeah. And then I just think like. Hopefully you said something helpful. <laughs> and even just like moving forward, like I love still talking to like other, other couples too. Like even prior to us getting married, as we were going on through our relationship, 
uh-huh. uh, like even at the, the workplace, like my trusted older, like elder confidants. Like I love hearing about relationships because like the, they've already navigated all the landmines, you know, or, or all the, the little battles that you run into. Right, so they teach right. you how to navigate it. Like, you know, whether it's your parents, your older friends, you know, so. I think don't be afraid to talk about stuff. You know, marriage is something that like you're going to work on. You're going to grow in. When you get married, you're new at it, right? Anytime you're new at something, you're going to have to learn. You're going to get better. So yeah. I think it's all good, you know, so you're in it with the, the best person you could be, you know. So. Aww. Thank you so much for listening. And all the way to the end, I am genuinely so grateful. So now you can continue to show your support in a few different ways. The first one is... If you can think of someone who might benefit from this episode, please send it to them. And the second thing is, we all are on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and the like. So please share this episode. And I love it when people tag me to their post. And three, head over to iTunes. You can leave a review and you can rate this episode. All your feedback is very helpful and it helps this podcast get visible so others can listen to all these great stories. Thank you so much. Till next time.